how to set up Viva Engage. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you some practical steps about how to start off setting up Viva Engage. Now I'm gonna break this out into three core areas, but obviously there's a lot of sub areas that you need to be considering as well. So keep in mind that Valto are adoption specialists of Microsoft 365 solutions. So if you ever need a consultant to help guide you through this, there's a link in the description below to contact us to reach out and we can help you through this entire process. First off, let's talk about licenses as this is the starting point for Viva Engage. Viva Engage isn't drastically expensive and actually it roughly works at about £1.64 per user per month. Now, of course, it's going to be slightly different if you're looking at it in any different currency, um, but it, it's roughly going to be that kind of price. It is an annual commitment um, and it gives you access to premium community knowledge and leadership experiences, unique company branded employee apps and centralized campaign management for communications. Now, Viva Engage can also be found in the Microsoft Viva Suite, which is a little bit more expensive, priced at £9.90 per user per month. But of course, you're getting way more Viva products inside of that license as well. Now, I just want to give a little high-level overview at this point. But if you do have any more questions, as I say, you can reach out to us for a free consultation and we can help you choose the best license for the products that you're trying to use. And if you're purchasing them in a large volume, there's a good chance that we could also beat the retail price as well. This brings me on to my second point when considering setting up Viva Engage. It's all about communities. So communities can be set up for all sorts of different things, but there's actually two different types of communities. You've got official communities, which are coming from the actual organization, and you have unofficial communities, which are essentially anyone can create. And as part of the setup phase, you wanna be thinking about what types of communities you could expect um, to be created. And what I would be doing is thinking about, first off, what are the going to be the official communities? So typically things like an all company community where everybody uh, is a member of it. You might also have some form of um, say communications or um, something which is a little bit more uh, still official, but it's something that's maybe um, softer kind of information like blog articles, uh, useful guides, things like that, which you might be pushing out. And then you might want to consider creating communities specifically for adoption. We'll talk a bit more about that uh, later on. And then also what I would be thinking about is communities which are going to be unofficial. Now, often the the questions asked between what actually is the difference between official communities um, versus unofficial. Now, official communities, because they are manned and owned by the organization, they often will be sort of marked here as an official community, which gives you a little tick, a little bit like on X or Twitter as I refer to, where you've got like a verified account. It's an official kind of account. You see this across quite a lot of different social medias as well, like Instagram and things like that. And essentially, this is saying to the user of the system that if you see any content that comes from an official community, it is almost like the gospel word of the organization. Whereas if you were to see something that was in, say, the running club or the, or the golf team, which isn't an official community, um, then it, it's obviously not coming directly from the company itself. Communities are fantastic for bringing people together. As we can see here, we have a conversations thread, and this is where we can see essentially the story, um, or what's known as storylines inside of Viva Engage of different conversations. Now, conversations are broken out into four different types of conversation. We can have discussions, which are essentially where we're posting our thoughts, ideas, or updates. We can have questions. Now, what I really love about questions is that it has a very almost Reddit type of approach. So it's a lot of Viva Engage is pulling some of the fantastic features that we see in other social media. So like in Reddit where you can post a question and then you can have people upvoting it um, or, or uh, marking things as best answers and things like that. Essentially, we can have that um, using this inside of Viva Engage. So you can see here we've got a question. People could then put in a comment or response. I could also mark the best answer as well. So it makes it much easier for people if they ever wanted to ask a question again um, to actually find previous questions and see what the best answer was if there was going to be a lot of responses within that question. 
Now, the other types of conversations we have praise. So praise is essentially where we're providing praise to um, a, a colleague or sort of friend we work with on a project. Um, and the final type is a poll where we can actually put a little sort of questionnaire survey type thing together where we ask people and then we can see their responses um, uh, sort of put in a sort of bar chart. And we can see that here where Rob's asked where developers, what your favorite IDE uh, for coding PowerShell and PMP, and we can see a few different responses here. This was just a general discussion. This obviously is a praise post, uh, and we can see a few different others um, further down the page as well. So this is what a community looks like. We can see the members of the community across the top. Uh, we can see a little bit of an info section if we wanted to edit this. We can add a little bit of additional info about this community for people to see. Essentially, this is just a bio section um, that we can add a bit of text description just to summarize what exactly this community is being used for. The pin section on the right hand side is essentially where you can add files or links that are important to this community. Think of this as like quick links or useful links that you could add on here. And then we see community resources. Now, you can see we've got a files tab here. Now, essentially, the files tab um, is a SharePoint library. So every single uh, kind of community we create also has a SharePoint team site in the background. And this is where it stores all the additional files. We also have a OneNote, which is created for it, as well as a planner for storing tasks um, and, and other things that we want to keep track of as part of this community. So this is fantastic, not only for sort of collaboration, but also for managing any sort of tasks or things which the community might be working towards. And just to round off this section, I would suggest maybe thinking about some super users, uh, community leaders, essentially community owners that are going to be driving this from an official kind of point of view, who's going to be owning the official different communities. Um, but also think about who's maybe going to own some of the unofficial ones. So maybe is there any sports groups, for example, like um, people interested in golf or football or running or anything like that, book clubs. There's so many different types of communities that we've seen before. And this is really useful, especially when people are hybrid working or working from home. It keeps people together uh, and kind of gives that kind of social feel, even when we're all working remotely. I just wanted to pause to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video, please do like. If you've got any questions, you can use the comments feed below, but also subscribe to our channel and go and check out all the other really useful content that we've got created on our channel. We've got loads of videos about Copilot, SharePoint, Power Apps, and so many other Microsoft 365 products that you might find really useful. And then the final thing I wanna talk about when it comes to setting up your adoption plan for Viva Engage, is thinking about not only um, the kind of overarching adoption strategy, but also how training is going to be provided for your organization. So Valto are actually adoption and change management specialists. So we've actually been recognized by Microsoft um, as a solutions partner for modern work, for helping people to adopt um, and basically take them through that change management um, cycle for making sure they get the best return on investment from modern work products such as Viva Engage. We do run full workshops to understand your requirements and then build a specific adoption strategy around how you and your organization are going to actually be using Viva Engage. Now, there's a number of things that we do recommend as part of adoption strategy that we'd run through with you during that workshop. But certain things include setting up, for example, an adoption community. So this is one recently we set up for uh, Copilot. This is a little demo. And what we can do is we can provide in here resources, materials, useful links to where um, we, we recommend people to go and check out um, about, say, for example, Copilot. But in this case, obviously, it would be about Viva. Um, we can also have, obviously, uh, discussion points in here, but also leveraging those features like in Planner to create tasks uh, for helping that adoption plan roll out. And I guess it's kind of like a start as you mean to go on. It's a great idea to create an adoption community because then you're learning about the product that you're using inside of the actual product. There's a lot of other things that we cover as well as part of the adoption strategy, including things like recommendations on who 
um, should maybe be rolled out to first. So quite often we look for super users from different departments and quite often for a new product like Viva Engage, we would suggest to say, maybe choose a couple of different people per department to um, have a little play around with it, to come up with some scenarios about how um, they would use it, what communities they would create it for, what maybe they would be replacing um, to use these communities instead. So maybe if they're using things like Slack um, or, or maybe even Teams in some cases get replaced with these communities. If you need any support or help rolling out Viva Engage to your organization, then please do contact us. There's a link in the description below which will get you in touch with our consultancy team. We offer a free one hour consultation to talk you through and give you a demonstration of Viva. And then we will book in a workshop with you to fully flesh out what the adoption strategy and rollout plan would be. We offer fixed prices for our deployments as well as full training packages. If you enjoyed this video, please do like it and subscribe to our channel for more videos. If you've got any questions, you can use the comments feed below and we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thank you.